Well, first and foremost, Happy New Year, New Year, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. Um, Kenton was just reminding me right before that this is our first webinar of the year. Uh, so super exciting. Um, it feels like forever since we've done the last one, but I'm, uh, you know, we're going to be back doing these every week and we're going to be throwing a lot more content at you uh, from all sorts of stuff. So very excited for the year. Um, as far as today goes, just a couple of logistics. Um, the recording and the accompanying code will be sent over to you in an email afterwards. So if you miss the webinar or something, or you want to rewatch it, don't even worry about that because it'll be, uh, you'll, you'll receive the recording in a follow-up. Um, and as always, please make use of the chat and the Q and A. Um, we want to make the, we want to make these as interactive as possible. Um, awesome. So, you know, with that said, um, I'd like to introduce Kenton, who is our lead developer advocate, who's going to walk you through how you can organize your Airflow project code with the Astro CLI. Um, over to you, Kenton. Awesome. Thanks, Raj. Uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining and happy new year. Like Raj said, we're super excited to be back um, and talking about Airflow again in the new year. Uh, we thought we would kick off uh, this year with this short live with astronomer session, which for those of you who are newer um, to these, we tend to keep them really short, like 10 to 15 minutes and very developer focused. So we'll go through a lot of code, not a lot of slides, despite what I have right now. Um, and we're going to do this one on kind of getting started with Airflow. This is going to be pretty basic, um, but uh, transformational uh, in terms of how you work with Airflow um, and how easy it is to get started. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and dive in. I promise this next one is my last slide, and then I'm going to actually show you some stuff. Um, this is to say that today we're going to talk about organizing your Airflow project code, and it's going to be in the context of using the Astro CLI. Um, put this link here. Uh, we can throw it in the chat as well. Shabraj can do that, so no worries about writing it down. Um, but getting started with the Astro CLI is super easy. You have to have Docker installed, but that's the only requirement. And it's going to be by far the easiest way to get started with Airflow. So if you're looking to work kind of in a project um, like I'm talking about, Today, I uh, highly recommend you go and download the CLI and get started there. It is totally open source, so it's available to everybody. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and kind of walk through the flow of once you have the CLI installed, um, getting started with a Airflow project is very straightforward. Um, you can see that I have Astro installed here. It's going to give me a whole bunch of commands interacting with Airflow. We're only going to cover a couple today. Um, the first is going to be starting a project. So this is the first step you're going to take when you want to work with a new Airflow instance, a new set of DAGs, um, something like that. And you're just going to run this command astro dev init. Um, that's going to initialize an astronomer project and create you this uh, structure to organize all your code that we're going to talk about. So you don't have to do it yourself. Um, I'm not in an empty directory, so it's going to make sure that I actually want to do this. I'm going to say yes. Um, once I do that, I go ahead and check out the files again. It's going to create me uh, a whole structure to organize my project in a really simple and easily scalable way. So from there, I'm going to transition over to my code editor here and go through uh, this file structure and how you can use it to work in an Airflow project. Um, so this is the same directory that I just initialized that project in. Uh, it's just a little easier to see here in my code editor. Um, the important pieces of this, we're going to go through all of them, are uh, the first one I'll point out is this Docker file. This is going to pull uh, your version of Airflow. It's Astro Runtime, which is Astronomer's uh, uh, distribution of the open source Airflow code. So it includes some extra packages um, and stuff bundled in for you. Um, this is running the newest version of Airflow. So when you initialize that project, it will automatically default to the newest version. But you can change this if you need to. Um, you can also further customize this Docker file. I'm not going to talk about that too much today. Um, it's maybe a little more advanced uh, for use cases, but you can uh, do that if you need to. Uh, so from after that, I'm going to start at the top, um, when kind of from the DAG authoring perspective. So you're going to have one, this Astro um, folder. You can, you, again, usually ignore that. That's more for kind of advanced configuration that the CLI is going to use. You probably won't need it, especially if you're just getting started. Um, then you have your DAGs folder. So this is where all of your DAGs are going to go. Um, we definitely recommend keeping, you know, one DAG per Python file for most, uh, most use cases. 
Um, when you initialize a project with the CLI, it will come with two example DAGs in here. So you'll see those. In this project, I've also added a couple of other DAGs. And you can see I've added them in some subfolders here. Just want to um, use that to highlight that if you have a lot of DAGs, you know, I've got maybe 15 or so in this repo, but you might end up with hundreds if you're working on a big team. Um, you can, you know, add additional structure to this uh, to help keep it more organized and easily easily readable. Um, and that's not going to impact anything about how Airflow is running or what you see in the Airflow UI. So you have sort of full control over what you're doing in there. Um, but all of your DAG, DAG files are going to go in that folder. Um, other things for kind of setting up the project are down here, you have a packages.txt file and a requirements.txt file. Those are for um, packages that you need installed in your Airflow environment when you start it up. So packages is going to be for any OS level things. Uh, so I added Git as an example here. Um, this is maybe less common to need these, but we do work with um, a lot of folks that will add things here. If you're working with like a Python virtual environment or something like that, you'll definitely need to add um, packages in this file. But again, this is just a really easy way to add things so that they get installed for you when you start up your Airflow. Um, and you don't have to worry about manually you know, installing them in your Docker file. Um, the next is your requirements text file. This is going to be for any Python packages. Um, you can see here that I've added a couple of provider packages. Um, some of these will be actually already included in Astro Runtime. Um, so you can uh, check in our documentation which ones those are. Um, but this can be a way to add anything else that you need that's not already included. Or if you need to pin a specific version, um, this is a way to do that. So you can add those here. Um, again, super straightforward and easy. Once I spin this project up, those will be installed automatically for me. Um, next, in terms of organization, I want to actually talk about what is going in your DAGs. Um, so the rest of the structure is going to be um, again, it's all kind of optional and highly customizable for whatever your use case is, but it's designed so that you can keep things kind of organized, clean, um, and easily managed by CI/CD. So, in a lot of cases, that means kind of separating out your DAG files more as configuration, and then having other supporting code living in different folders, um, which again is just going to make it easier to work across large teams, um, and it's going to make your DAG files a lot cleaner. So. Uh, for that purpose, we have an include directory, which, again, this is going to ship just with include. I've added some uh, additional structure beneath this. The most common uh, reason to use the include directory is if you have other scripts um, that are being called by your DAGs. So um, like Python functions, uh, SQL scripts in this case. Um, if you have custom hooks or operators, you can put them in here. Um, that's the most common. And then the way this works, so we'll look at um, like I have Python here and I have this get activity that has a Python function in it to use that. Um, look at my DAGs folder again and hop over to my example DAG advanced. Um, again, this is going to ship with the CLI. I've actually made this change to it. So um, normally the way it will be created is that Python function we just looked at will be in this file, um, which as you can see, a lot of this is documentation just to help you get familiar with Airflow, but this file has a lot going on in it. So you get a bit of benefit from lifting out things that you don't actually need in here. Um, and then uh, to actually use that file um, or that Python function in a Python operator, um, you can see, let's go all the way down to uh, where I have this. I'm actually going to just find it. Um, oops, sorry. Um, so my file is named get activity. So we're just going to find this is really long. So that'll save me some time. So here I have my uh, Python callable within a branch Python operator, and I'm just passing in that name. So um, Airflow is aware that files in that include directory um, are available to your DAGs. So you can add them in there really simply. So um, we do that in a couple of different places. Uh, you may need to be Python, um, add this parameter called template search path um, to tell your DAGs like, hey, there are files in this other folder outside of my DAGs 
folder that you need to access. Um, so that's why we add this include Python here um, with this file path. So that's there as an example if you need to add that. And the other example for this include, we have uh, SQL scripts. So, and you can see a couple of different options of how this can work in this case. So we have one, um, this tutorial SQL statements.py. Um, these are obviously in a Python function, but if we look in this file, you can see uh, just a bunch of SQL statements and strings here. Um, this is a great option if you have like a lot of different um, queries that you're going to run, uh, but you want to keep them all in one file. So if we take a look at uh, this other DAG, like Snowflake example, in order to use those SQL statements, we import this just like we would any other Python function. So um, from our include SQL folder, um, we import the file. And in this case, we're going to import it as SQL statements. And then you can see that um, oops, statements. Um, you can see down in our Snowflake operators, we're going to reference the specific query from within that file. So um, that's one option for managing in like a bunch of different queries that we're using. You can see there's a couple of different ones here. We create a table, we create a different table, um, and you can reference those statements. Again, this is going to keep your DAG file much cleaner, so you don't have all of those within these operators here. Um, the other option for uh, doing something like a SQL statement is adding it to a SQL file directly and just calling that from your DAG file. So in this case, we have a delete table.sql. Um, you can see here that uh, this particular query is parameterized, so it will have information passed into it when you run your DAG. Um, in this case, we have delete table.sql, and we're going to refer to that directly within our DAG file. So delete table. Um, dot SQL, and we just pass that to the SQL parameter, and it's going to run whatever is in that file. So um, you could also manage, you know, all of your queries in separate files, uh, or you can do it, you know, again in a single Python file. So you have a couple of different options there, depending on kind of your use case and what works best for you and your team. Again, just note here for um, something like calling the whole file, um, if it's not a Python file, um, you may have to add it to that template search path DAG parameter, which we've got in this DAG uh, up here. So um, you'll know if you have to add that because you'll go ahead and put it in and you'll get an import error on your DAG that says, hey, that file doesn't exist. And it's just because Airflow doesn't know to look in that include directory. So, um, so that's what include is for. Again, just going to help uh, keep your DAG files a lot more organized. Um, this can be really helpful, especially if you have so the sort of structure where you might have analysts that are writing queries, and then you know other folks on your team that are responsible for operationalizing those within a DAG, so that you can have things kept totally separate. They'll ma be maintained, you know, in separate version control, um, so that you can uh, keep all of that organized. Uh, last folder here that I'll go through is, well, actually, that's a lie. There's two more that I'm going to go through. Um, next one is plugins. Uh, this is going to be for any Airflow plugins. So if you had worked with a really old version of Airflow, you might have been used to the idea of adding like custom hooks or operators in plugins. You don't have to do that now. Um, so we would recommend just adding those and include importing them like you would any other file and keep this plugins for actual Airflow plugins, which are generally um, you know, like things you're going to add to oftentimes the Airflow UI. Um, so that's extra code. In this particular case, this one's going to add an uh, operator extra link um, for an HTTP operator. Um, so this is where you're doing things like you're overriding um, how documentation shows up in the Airflow UI, or maybe you have, uh, you know, some sort of um, plugin where you can, you know, add parameters to DAGs. I've seen um, teams do that uh, so that you have uh, like a form that you can fill out when running DAGs. Um, you can get pretty fancy here. Uh, we won't go through that today, but it's just to say that that's what the plugins directory is for to add these things. Um, and those are going to need to actually be like installed when you run your Airflow project. Um, the last directory uh, as part of the Airflow CLI is this test directory. So this is also going to ship with an example um, test file. This is super helpful for um, 
uh, running local tests on your DAG. So if you have tests running like in a CI CD script, when you deploy your DAGs, this can be a really great place to add, um, add them so that you can run them locally before you ship everything. Um, so again, we ship with some examples here that you can go through, um, but that's what that folder is for. And yeah, so that's most of the structure. So once you have all of your files added, um, I mean, back to your terminal to actually start this project, you can just run astro dev start. Um, I've actually already done that and got it running. Um, when you do that, you'll see a whole bunch of printout from everything in your requirements.txt file getting installed. Um, and eventually you'll see some containers getting created to run Airflow locally. Um, and it will say your project's now available. We can go back to browser here and pop over. And again, here you'll see the Airflow UI with all of those DAGs that I have in this environment. Again, that structure that I'd added to the DAGs folder is purely for reviewing the code. It's not going to show up in the Airflow UI, um, but it does help, again, just when working locally. So uh, I'll go ahead and pause there. That was most of the structure that I wanted to cover today. And we have a few minutes if there are any questions. Awesome. Thanks for going through that, Kenton. Um, we do have time for a few questions. I think I got to some of them in the chat, but um, uh, any other questions around how to organize your project? I guess I'll add that with a follow-up question is, would it be helpful if we did another one of these on what happens next year in terms of your branching strategy and CICD and so on? Would that be helpful for uh, as like a follow-on session to when you think about how to organize your DAX? Gotcha. Got a few yeses around that. Yes, vote. Cool. We'll definitely <laughs> do that. Awesome. All righty. This is the best part about these. We want your input on what sort of content we can make to make it helpful for you all. Um, so don't have a date for that yet, but we'll definitely keep it in our backlog. Yeah. Um, I will also throw out there that uh, in terms of getting started with Airflow, like I said, definitely recommend everybody go try the Astro CLI, um, but we will also have some upcoming events on um, other really easy ways to get started with the Astro CLI and with Airflow. Um, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, we're always trying to lower the barrier to entry and we want to make it really easy to get up and running and playing around. So keep an eye out for that. Awesome. Sujan, to your question, we don't have a recording on pricing. Um, if you're trying to purchase Astronomer and you want some info on pricing, uh, just shoot me a note and I can help out with that. Um, or if you drop your email in the chat, I can um, I can just follow up with you and we can have a conversation about that. I'll throw out there that everything that we covered today is totally open source and free. So yes, great call. <laughs> Should have started talk with that. for a long time about astronomers value add that you can pay for, but that's not what we covered today. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. The CLI is Apache 2 licensed. Yes. Um, cool. Awesome. Uh, so I'll just drop a link to it directly uh, one more time. Just so everyone has it. Um, if you find yourself using it, please throw it a GitHub star. That would be super helpful as we know it's picking up traction. Oh. And then I think there's one more question in the QA. As CLI, I was thinking about seeing command line, executing CICD, but only setup was shown. Yeah, this, this session was just about uh, how you can organize your code and getting things set up. It wasn't for a CICD pipeline. We can definitely do one of those at a later date. Uh, but thanks, Emmanuel, for the question. Yeah. Sure. Awesome. Appreciate cool. the compliment, Victor. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you here next week. And uh, until then, I hope you all have a, have a good week. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.